So you're. Oh, oh hey guys, we gotta stop oh. for a second because signing in right now is one of the fastest men <laughs> we ever had the pleasure of watching. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> Pretty good. good. Thank, yeah, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Grabs. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I guess I just want to start off asking, uh, obviously, last year you didn't play with the you know, con- schedule playing teams in your own division. Um, are, you, are you looking to continue playing this season? Have you been skating? What are your expectations for this coming season? Sorry, I, I think I was on a car Wi-Fi, so I missed all that question. Can you repeat that again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I said with last last season, obviously, and we know that you didn't play due to the condensed schedule and only playing teams in your division. Um, have you been skating with an eye on playing this season, or what do you you know what does the future hold for you? I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's not really, well, I've been working out and stuff, but mostly just skating with my son's team and uh, I'm helping out as assistant coach with them for now. Um, other than that, I really haven't given it too much thought what's going to happen. I think there's so much going on in this world that's out of <laughs> our control and uh, everyone has their own opinion about certain things and so do I, but yeah. I don't really like to broadcast mine too much but so i'm just gonna <laughs> sit back and just take it day by day i guess so. michael uh, uh, you're one of the few guys that in the history of the nhl that's played for all three of the metro area teams the rangers islanders and devils what were the the great things that you liked about each of your three stops at those three places I think they're all great organizations. Um, obviously, they're all different in the sense of uh, fans and um, how they're set up and stuff and what kind of budget they got and all that. But, yeah, I just, I think, had a lot of, some good years in the Tri-State. Uh, it was fun to see all three organizations, how they're run. And um, I made great memories and great friends um, in all of them. And, yeah, I don't really have anything negative to say about any of those organizations. Are there still any uh, former Rangers that you still talk to, even on like a semi-regular basis? Yeah, you, I check in um, with different guys at different times. Obviously, life goes fast. Um, guys grow up, get kids, you know, move move states, move teams. And um, some, sometimes you just like lose a little bit. But some guys will check in once in a while. That's the good part. Like guys you play with, um, even if they reach out three years from now, you know, you still talk to them like it played with them yesterday so um that's the cool thing about hawk you get to meet a lot of different guys and different players from different countries and stuff so it's hockey is just a good sport i think overall michael you've always been known as like one of the fastest skaters in the nhl um are there players in the league that you ever looked around to and went that guy is fast in comparison to you no no. <laughs> I don't know. In my head, I always believed when I was playing, I was the fastest. I don't know. Like it's not a thing that I met that I necessarily was the fastest, but I never really. People always ask me that question too. It's like, oh, how was it being out there against this guy or this guy? For me, it doesn't matter if it was a fourth line guy or if it was Sidney Crosby out there. I played the same way. I tried to treat my my game, the, what I do during my shift, like the same as, like I said, no matter who is out there, if you start changing your game based on who's on the ice, then you're going to start making mistakes. You start overthinking it. So I wasn't looking around too much during games. I was focused more on my what I have to do out there. So, uh, yeah, and then when I got to the bench, I tried to get my heart rate down so I can go out and do some more sprints. So, <laughs> yeah, I was more focused on myself during games. So, Grabs, I'm, I'm the Islander fan group, so I got to ask you about the Isles. Um, you know, you, you kind of grew up with Bales and Zeker. You played with them for a while. Martin, um, were, you, were you really pulling for them to, to beat Tampa in the conference finals, being that you, you know, were so close to those guys for so long? Yeah, it was great to see. Obviously, those guys have been there for a long time now, and um, they saw it through from the beginning, the rebuild to now to see what kind of – players they become and um, how good their team is every year now, right? Like, they're always up there. They're a hard team to play against. So, um, yeah, it's definitely fun to watch. Uh, I think they're really close. It's just, like, sometimes a little bit of luck here and there, right? Like, it could have gone either way. 
I personally believe no matter who are these two teams moved on was going to win the cup. So I think if yeah. they would have won that game, they probably would have won the Stanley Cup in my eyes. So, um, yeah, it was. I think it's probably tough for them to to lose that close to the to the finals. But yeah, I think they're gonna be right back next year. They have a great team, a great core, and um, yeah, they're a fun team to watch. That's for sure. Michael, who was your favorite player, to, or like whether it was teammate or an opponent to chirp? Like who who were the biggest chirpers to you? Well, I think it's always like an under. It's a tough question. Like, uh, there's so many underestimated <laughs> chirpers on like teams. Like, that's just like the whole hockey culture, right? Like, if you can't handle uh, being made fun of or stuff, you're not gonna last long in a room. So, this guy, <laughs> certain guys, that try to stay out of it. You know, they get like picked on once every couple months, just like something. But they're usually like more just trying to sit in the back. And then you have guys like Steps. He's like usually just stirring the pot all the time in New York and here. Like he'll just like chime in, but then walk out of the room, right, and get everyone going. So like it's like a different <laughs> dynamic. But for most part, like hockey guys are pretty good at chirping. I think overall. So good at chirping. I I, I did not I did not expect you to say Derek Stepan. That that's a fun one. No, I know. I, I don't think he's the best chirper. I think he's the best pot stirrer. <laughs> like he'll still get him. <laughs> He'll get involved in like a conversation, but then walk out the room, and then guys were going at each other, and he will just laugh outside in the hallway, right? Like, but the chirper, like the best chirps, there's a lot of guys I don't even know. Like, like I said, you gotta hold your own in the locker room, otherwise you're not gonna last very long. <laughs> what about uh, what about Cal Clutterbuck? He seems like a guy that can really chirp. Yeah, there's a lot of guys, Marty, Cal Clutterbuck, like. I don't know. It's I mean, like I think I haven't met a guy that couldn't really chirp. Maybe there's some guys that are quiet, <laughs> they hold back. But other than that, like if you go and add guys, like most guys can give it back pretty good. So, like there's the only certain guys that will do it more on the ice, obviously, right? That's the guys you guys see. But in a locker room setting, it's I think it's a free for all to be honest. Mike, as <laughs> uh, Michael, as soon as um, Anthony said you were coming on the show, my first thought of uh, as a Ranger fan was the game against you guys played against Columbus when they came fresh off that long winning streak. And you had that goal with a minute remaining, um, maybe even less than that. Cause I remember thinking, Oh my God, Columbus isn't going to get anything out of this. And the Rangers are doing great. What is when looking at like all your playing time right now? Is there like any favorite goals that you have right now? Yeah, that's probably one of them, but it's not probably because of my goal. It's more of the call, like the people, like, you know, like they remember the call. And, um, <laughs> yeah, but it's just like there's certain goals. Do you remember? Obviously, your first goal, you always remember, like, I still remember that scoring that. So, um, it's the same as moments. For me, it's tough to pick out. They always like, oh, you have a favorite moment in the league. There's so many situations, like, like, Playing in a playoff, scoring a, free, you know, what I mean, there's so many things that it's, it's almost impossible to pick out one specific thing that that it's just like you make so many memories along the way that it's always it's a it's for me it's the big picture how many people you met like on all the moments combined of your story, you know what I mean? Like I don't know, I always find it weird when people try to ask you to pick out one thing in like a eleven year out of eleven years, you know what I mean? Like yeah. A lot of time. Maybe if I won a cup, that would have been obviously a different story, right? Like you had one thing to be like, okay, yeah, that's the year or whatever you remember the most. But for me, like not winning a cup, other than that, you just have like a set of memories, I think. Like that's just like I don't know. I don't know. It's hard it's hard to explain oh. in my eyes. That year, you guys had a great run in 2017. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I think a tough series against Ottawa. I think we still should have won that. But it goes back to my first year in Vancouver. Like, I, f I remember that, like, yesterday, like, losing to Chicago and they went on winning. I, th I think if we won that series, we would have won. Like, Vancouver was so good that year. I was only going up and down. So, and I was part of the playoffs thing. Like, got called up there. So, I think they had such a good team that if we would have moved past Chicago, that we would have won. So, like, just looking back and thinking that might have been your best shot, one of your best chances, your first year, you know what I mean, playing 20 games in the league of winning the Cup. So, it's, just, it's, yeah, it's, it's fun to look back and think about what could have been, but it's tough to win the Cup, of course. So, so Krabs, before, before we let you go, I wanted to ask, um, we, we talked about Lou Lamoureux earlier and how, 
how secretive he is and how he hasn't rumored to have all these signings. Who knows? Maybe he signed you. We don't even know. But um, <laughs> how does uh, – I, I think when the Islanders traded you to uh, Toronto, I believe Lou was the general manager at that time. What, what about him allows him to pull this off where he's so secretive, no one leaks anything? You know, I know he has no facial hair rule, no high jersey numbers. What what is it like to be on a Lou Lamorello team? Like, what type of guy is he? Well, obviously, I only got to know him this one year up there. And um, other than the, the haircut and facial like stuff, like, he is a great guy. Like, they were really welcoming. They tried to do everything for the families and all this stuff. So... I think people just respect them, and uh, they maybe I don't know, like maybe they know they get in trouble if they leak stuff. But he just tries <laughs> to keep it close to his, you know, like like it's always up. There's always rumors out there, this and this happens. But then sometimes the opposite happened with him, right? Like so, I don't know. He's yeah. been around the league a long time. I think reporters know how he does business and stuff. So he probably just built that reputation, and um, guys so, and people won't go against him, obviously. And he can just. Um, build his team the way he wants to and and no one knows what he's really thinking that's it's it's really funny it, uh, it, got a it is but like i said he's a great guy <laughs> other than the, 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 the facial hair and the haircuts he's it's he's really all for the players and he tries to do everything he can to make it as comfortable as, for, as possible for the players so are right. you uh are you gonna take a trip back here to see ubs arena at some point next year yeah, we'll see. I think it's supposed it's a little bit delayed, right? So I think they have like a yeah. long road trip coming up, but I probably that was a given. So like yeah, if I make it back out there I definitely wanna check it out. I heard they they kinda of build it the same as uh the Coliseum, like or try to at least I guess with the yeah. way the setup is. So like I think the rink in Long Island is still one of the best atmospheres I played at, especially the Pittsburgh series. So that was a lot of fun and oh, hopefully yeah. they can bring the same energy to that building. I still remember that game against Pittsburgh, the fight night game. You had a breakaway and you scored on a, I think it was Brent Johnson. That, yeah. that was, that was, that was amazing. Yeah. I was, was about awesome. like, I was one of six, seven guys that were still left, you know, like I don't really fight. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, thanks a lot, Mike Grabs. I appreciate you taking out the time to join us. And, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully if you make a trip back to Long Island at UBS arena, maybe we'll see you there. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You know, um, oh, that's awesome. and, and <laughs> I, I just wanted to also let them know somebody's going to come calling. The, they always need a penalty killer for the playoffs. So uh, uh, I, I still think he's got gas left in the tank. I, I just, he does. He's what? He's 30, 33 years old. 33. He's still got, he, Listen, he yeah. could probably still be a good bottom six forward at the very <clears throat> least. Okay. And and again, that's one of those things, like I said before, you know, teams need guys like that when it comes to playoff time. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs>